hello everyone everyone welcome to the channel okay you see the plane that means we taking off for some bullshit okay we're going in the atmosphere the stratosphere to try to find out this mess Portia wrote in her book i'm going to be talking about chapter seven in the book that Portia recalled her named or we can say she named her book Portia williams the pursuit of Portia." And from what she was telling us, this is her autobiography. She's telling us the truth and making us go crazy at the same time with her foolishness. Now, we're in chapter 7. <coughs> and the reason why I'm just touching on chapter 7, because it's, it's nothing more than what the drama feel that she gave us in 4, 5, and 6. Okay? She's blaming everything on everybody else and not herself. But my question to you, Miss Portia girl... Why are you mentioning some people in your book that were a part of the Real Housewives of Atlanta um, cast show? While one person you just decide to leave out altogether, but you talked about her. You didn't say her name, but everybody can read and hear. They know you were talking about Kenya, girl. You're doing too much, too much, too much, too much. Now, when y'all were pregnant, y'all were bosom buddies, y'all were friends. But of course, we went ahead of time. So when y'all first got introduced to each other, that was in, uh, I think, episode or season five. Okay, both of y'all were coming on the scene new, fresh, and trying to make a statement for yourselves. Kenya had already solidified herself in the entertainment business with working with famous people as Jay-Z, doing videos, you know, uh, sexy videos with rappers and this, that, and the third. She didn't do too much. She wasn't uh, sacrificing herself to be no video ho. Other than what we tried to see you in. But I didn't really see you in anything. And I looked. <coughs> but I know Ke Kenya was featured on uh, some sitcom shows such as Martin. Saw her in there. She did one with um, the twins. T uh, Tia and Tamara Mowry. I think it was Tia was the one she had filmed some sitcom with. She had, it really wasn't a cameo scene. It was a little bit more. And she's been in other things, as we know, like Dancing with the Stars and this, that, and the third. But, girl, this is before y'all heyday with being on The Real Housewives of Atlanta and the many doors that it offered you all by being on this platform. But, child, we got to go back. We got to go back way on, way back when, honey. We can put Prince in them. International lover. Yes. Yeah, you think you fly. But, anyway. Why would you talk about Cynthia Bailey, Nene Leakes, the show itself, and how you were faring, and how Nene Leakes had told you that you were going to lose your husband, your marriage, your marriage is going to suffer, your husband is going to be thinking you're the it factor, you're the shit, and he's going to be mad because everybody's focusing on you. And at first you said she wanted to throw Nene out your house because she didn't know what the hell she was talking about. She wasn't coming in trying to see from the outside what was going on when technically your inside of your home was you know in shambles metaphorically and you weren't happy in your marriage and this that and the third but what you were chit chatting with them about was when you were being introduced uh as a newcomer to the show and kenya moore at the time was being introduced as a newcomer to the show and they wanted you all to meet and they had went to this whole fascinating thing about you were giving a dinner or a, a, a fundraiser charity bazaar type of ball at your um, deceased grandfather's uh, estate. And everything was set up. Bravo was got the cameras going on and they were telling you just go for it. Do what you do. Just make like the cameras aren't here. And so it was time for Kenya to make her entrance. And as we all know, because Kenya always put it in our heads, she's Miss USA. Okay. Miss USA. Alrighty. But for some reason, when everyone told you that, I guess you, from what you say, you were just so scared. So scared that you mispronounced her title. And of course, can you got mad at your ass? Because you said you only had to get one thing right, and that was just to introduce me. And they didn't know each other, to be fair, at the time. They were getting to know each other. But evidently, Portia didn't get the memo that when you talk about Kenya, you better come straight because she will check you and check you good. And with y'all first meeting one another, 
<sighs> How could you make such a, you said a fordering slip, but that was just like piss poor. I mean, get your notes together. Make sure you, or even if you were very nervous, you could have said, Miss Kenya Moore, could you please come to the stage? I want to make sure that I got everything correct on you. And better, matter of fact, I would love for you to introduce yourself, y'all. And, and just say everybody give her a wonderful uh, applause and have her come to the stage because she's going to tell you who she is because she's a queen in my book and if that's and then you you could have led that into leading her to explain who she was what she had did for so long what she's doing now and that she is you know honored to be at such a prestigious gathering as such as you had invited her to see people such as myself when I'm not on point and I don't know too much that's how I would have did it because I'd be damn if I'm gonna make a fool of myself and then I'm gonna make a fool out of you and in hindsight can you didn't like you from since then and if you don't think i'm telling the truth let's go on into that answer okay she goes on to say this night was meant to honor her and welcome to her to atlanta i even had an awkward i mean i even had an award created for her standing in front of the band and the cameras i made a speech to welcome the guests sharing how important it was that we as women gather a, and raise money to pour back into our communities i also wanted to use the opportunity to present this beauty queen with the award let's see she could say beauty queen then she could have said well, you know anything but not give her title away since she wasn't quite sure but she went on she said i just wanted to announce that we do have miss america here i said to the women in attendance it was a total fordering fordering slip okay my castmates immediately side eye let me know that i had gotten her title wrong she was actually in Miss USA. When I saw her face, I immediately said, oh, I'm sorry, and continued on with the speech, <coughs> hoping she would be forgiven of the slip. Now, she didn't mention her name, still ain't mentioned her name through this whole chapter, but we knew she was talking about Kenya. But I'm like, if she's going to get everybody other uh, parts in the book and tell who they were, and uh, resound their accolades or whatnot of being on the show, why would you leave Kenya out? Now, this mess should have been taken care of way before because this book is fairly recent. What happened to you all? We are in season 13. We'll be in 14 come March, I believe it is. When they'll start letting us see the show. I'm not really sure. Or 2020. You wrote this book in 2021. And you kept her name out. That means you're holding something back. So how is this growth? You said this book was all about growth, owning your truth, owning your mistakes, and moving forward. And learning from the experiences that um, weren't so favorable for you. You were learning from them and improving. But how can you? You left Kenya Moore last name out of this book. Okay? That is so fake, fraudulent, fuckery, and full of foolishness. Okay? Foolishness, Portia. But anyway, she goes on to say, although I had moved on from the mistake pretty quickly to save face, in my mind, I was so embarrassed. I couldn't, I could have died that I messed up her title. I literally folded into myself like a roly-poly and just rolled behind the band. It's just that I was so nervous, I didn't know what was coming out of my mouth. Well, roly-poly shouldn't have came out of your mouth either, because that's for fat folks. Because when... You know, I think about when people used to call people roly-poly. They were t they were trying to pick at people that were huge. Okay, so that was a uh, that was a that wasn't a Fordian slip, nor how you mispronounce Kenya's title when she was Miss USA back then. But you said she was Miss America, and you thought both of them were the same. But I'm sure as Kenya got to know you, you think it's 265 days in a year, as well as we have a train underground to take us to Freedom uh, Village or something. Okay. Ah, uh, Portia, 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 Portia. But anyway, going from that, she said, uh, "I realized, oh wow, she's not even accepting my apologies. She really chopped a, she really caught the whole attitude. Her entire energy had shifted, and for the rest of the night, she kept looking at her phone and almost if she wanted to leave. Eventually, she did in fact leave. Oh my God, what am I supposed to do? Let the cameras uh, catch me? Uh, no, what am I supposed to do? Let's cut the cameras because this isn't going the way it's supposed to go. What do you mean? We're here to film your reality. Go on and tell her what you want her to know. So I asked, what do you mean? I want her to come back and, and sit down. And then the camera people said, well, go tell her. 
um, one of the crew members advised her, this was my first time filming for the show and it was turning into a horror show. How did I end up in such a misunderstanding and why couldn't I calm this woman down? I'm human. I'm used to making mistakes and then saying, my bad, I apologize. Well, see, that's the problem, Portia. When you had did that, and I, I remember that particular episode, you made that little slip of the tongue that was, you know, not favorable for Kenya. But yet, you didn't clean it up. You didn't, you know, you, it was just a whole mess. And it's like you really didn't take what you did to her serious. You're like, okay, I made a mistake. I apologize. We're going to move on. And she had like nothing, you know, had dropped a beat. But I'm saying, you sitting up there saying you were nervous and all that. Girl, come on. Come on. There's no growth here. There's no growth. Then she goes in and says, I was trying to calm down a guest at a charity event meant to continue my father's legacy and raise money for the community. She was literally making a scene. See? See how Portia sit there and flip the script? She made the incident be what it was. Then she tried to make it be like it was light-hearted, that it shouldn't have affected her anyways. You know, it is what it is. She's no longer Miss USA. But it was just a fact, Portia. It was just a fact. And then you tried to nullify it and try to make like um you wanted to become the villain because she, it wasn't really about her it was about your grandfather's legacy and his charity event that you were uh giving you know getting on but that's just like calling Martin Luther King Cicely Tyson or Martin Luther King um uh, let's see Tyler Perry you know what I'm saying come on girl are you serious ah uh, ah uh, I mean I'm just like in awe even just say you were introducing a poet as a the next singer that's going to come and give us a rendition of uh, Old Lady Mac Macbeth or something to that effect. You see where I'm going, Portia? It doesn't go the same. The comparison similarities you try to have and put forth to carry off to carry on your mistake. It's just eh, it's crazy. So, and then I'm pretty sure Kenya may have gotten the book or maybe somebody told Kenya, well, you know, she talked about you in chapter seven and how, you, you know, you were just really being, you know, very difficult and, and overbearing about somebody mispronouncing your title, this, that, and the third. And she, but she didn't really mention you, like, actually say your name, you know, and that's just like starting more mess. So I was like, Portia, what, what is going on with you? But then we go on it says um by the time she showed up to my charity event not to mention she was in a music video and had done some actual acting she knew what she was doing i on the other hand had never been in front of these type of cameras i was low low key well really high key freaking out after realizing that she was doing what i i would like to call housewife stuff i didn't know where she was going to take it if she had planned to down my family legacy right along with her uh, producer scanning me and she was huffing and puffing out the door and said she's leaving and she wants a plate of food to go. A plate to go. <laughs> I was like, oh lord. Yeah, I remember that too. I was like, Kenya, that's tacky. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to eat some food. I would have got the food first. Then I would have uh, acted up. But in hindsight, Kenya said she was hungry and she wasn't going to go to no McDonald's or no Chick-fil-A. I was dressed up. Um, so then that's when Portia was really having just, she's just being trippy. Like, she didn't want to get it late in no food and this, that, and the third. Talking about she can go on by her business. She had already just ruined her event by showing up, well, showing up and showing out twice, both for the negative. But I'm like, Portia, you couldn't see, baby, what you had did to her to offend her. She was all pretty and everything, coming in now and trying to to her own horn. Maybe want to give us a rendition of anything she had taken part of when she had was asked to uh, give us something far as uh, explanation of why she wanted to become Miss USA and this, that, and the third. You know how people get interested and they want to uh, ask certain questions. What made you want to do this? How, ha how has it worked out by you being uh, that particular person? What did you learn from your travels or going around to the different countries, being a spokesperson or an ambassador of our great USA? You know, just stuff of that nature. But you took that from her, Portia. You uh, took it as something that was, you know, something that was then and this is now and we need to move on, basically. So you, you kind of like thumbed her down. So I could see why she was upset with you. And then when you're going to go back the next day 
for the next week and have a conversation with Cynthia and Nene and you know they coming over your grandfather's house because Cordell wouldn't let you film at you all's house which is supposed to be your house that he gave you as a wedding present but he told you who could come over there how they could come when they needed to go and this that and the third and pretty much your family was totally off guard they couldn't come over to see you he damn sure didn't want no film crew over there taping through his house and showing his valuables and this that and the third that was a no-go so you had to actually leave your home go over to your grandfather's house and i'm guessing asking permission to come over there to do this light filming then you had women that you really didn't know either nene leaks and cynthia bailey because you got to know them from the, the crew people telling you about them and i guess andy and some of the execs letting you know who you're going to be filming with that particular day and giving you a synopsis of who they were this that and the third and of course they come into your home and you go and have this whole <sighs> display of who you are where you come from what you're about what your uh, grandfather's legacy about and how you want to promote it on the show this that and the third boring anyway they didn't want to listen to it either Nene pretty much said yes we know who you are and we know where you derive from this that and the third and then Nene was trying to give you some information or some advice that wasn't given to her when she first started on the show on you know people are going to tell you down in social media they're going to tell you down in the organization itself the girls that you tape with or the women you're going to have some tiff and taps with them but it just is what it is get your taping in you know she's just giving her the abc one two three and to stay focused on her storyline and try to be true to herself through the entirety of the taping and she went on a went a little further and was telling nene i mean nene was telling her you know hey um you know it is what it is um you're gonna have some things happen to you and your marriage i'm not saying it to hurt your feelings this that and third but guess what baby girl it's gonna happen okay and it was just crazy and she just got upset with nene them and didn't know what to really say and um she pretty much wanted to throw them out as well but i'm um, trying to see where she quoted it um but anyway, like I said, um, let's go. It says, I was bombarded by hurtful messages on social media. Some were calling me dumb. Others were saying I was a disgrace, asking where did this girl come from. I felt so crushed because a true slip of the tongue caused people to seriously question my intelligence, my character, and who I was. I broke down, crying hysterically to Nene and Cynthia on a three-way call, screaming, I can't do this. Um, then they both tried to silence her and say yes you can people are calling me names people are being downright cruel the ladies knew what it felt like by being misunderstood uh so they understood what it was meant to be unhappy uh with the way you were portrayed or just talking too much or not enough they told me that it was okay to feel how i was feeling okay nene advised it was your first season everybody goes through the first season she's right cynthia added everybody goes through this but portia you're built for this you can do this this is why they picked you you know how many women would kill for this job they chose you for a reason okay now i'm saying all right um <laughs> it's funny that cynthia would say that uh that's why she was holding on as best as she could to the time that she did rain on the real housewives of atlanta and i found it piss poor was when she knew they were getting rid of her because they didn't want her dry uh antics anymore on the show so she was just saying oh it's, I, I, it's running scores i had a good run this and the third and da, 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 da. i'm like girl they didn't want you no more baby just like you said how many women would kill for that position to be on a platform such as that and you were chosen you know just don't look a gift horse in the mouth run with it is basically what she was trying to say and if cynthia could have gotten a uh peach holding thing and not a friend of the show she would have been right there too she, it wouldn't have been no situation she tired of taping she tired of doing this no that's easy a free money you just act a fool carry on have a good storyline and be believable and likable to the public then you got another check for another season okay but if you don't want to act up you don't want to show degrade yourself a little bit here and there then yeah um yeah you will be cut pretty much but um, Portia goes on to say, you know, um, Nene and uh, Cynthia had their technically 
you know, take me off of the ledge or bring me back to reality and, and face up to why I wanted to be a part of the show. And they pretty much saved me and that's why I'm still here. I'm like, girl, you still there because you wanted that money. You wanted that money, girl. You wanted that money. So, um, then she goes on to say, um, what Nene goes on to say. It, she goes on to say that Nene said, in fact, it always seemed that Nene in particular, Nene in particular was there to either calm me down or give me true tea throughout the ups and downs of my first season. You know, uh, you and Cordell are going to break up, right? She told me during one of our conversations. And she said, excuse me. I said, completely offended by the suggestion. <coughs> uh, she wasn't going to sit here and tear down my marriage. No, seriously, this is Nene speaking. I don't mean any harm. But the show is going to change your marriage. Mark my words. I was not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know, Portia. Okay, now listen to me. She said in this that signature Nene Twain that I have fallen in love with during season one of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. You're on this show, right? Their pussy game go up. You know how these women be. Nene said of those kinds of women who throw themselves at any man they see on TV. And in the meantime, while he's at work and while he's at the grocery store and while he's with his boys, people are telling him Portia's husband. It doesn't matter what job he has now because he's no longer on that field. He's losing fame. And now you're the star. He ain't gonna like that and he ain't gonna like you having all this time dedicated to something outside of the house. I didn't want to believe it, but every single warning Nene uttered that day came to be fruition. Came to fruition. Okay. So, I was like, oh my goodness. You telling me that you could talk about Nene, you could talk about Cynthia, but you can't talk about Kenya. You can't say I'm referring to Kenya in this book. You know, I am talking about Miss USA, but calling her Miss America. And then I'm talking behind her back publicly, which she pretty much saw after that episode or that season had ended how they see everything that happened or transpired through that taping of that show for that season she know you were talking about her and she know you were talking about her to her nemesis but like i said a lot has happened a lot has changed and a lot of things have moved forward but yet portia what you did what you said what you didn't say you know it le it kind of made me think that you still hadn't grown up and why are you putting her in your book but you don't want to get her recognition See, that's the piss poor, you know, thing about it. And then you and her used to have play dates for you and the babies. You remember the babies y'all had together? And that y'all were trying to form another relationship on motherhood since y'all couldn't get, get it together on sisterhood. And, you know, you just flip the script every time we, we see you. And it's all like being consistent, being true to thyself. So I'm like, are you still carrying a, a, a hate torch? A hate torch for um, Kenya Moore Girl? Are you still having a torch for hate for her just because she is who she is and she can handle her shit without having to put hands on somebody? But I don't know. I just thought it was piss poor and pretty much the whole book was a bunch of mess. Thank God I only paid less than $20 for it because I really didn't see anything else worth talking about out the page or uh, chapter seven. You know, the uh, Black Lives Matter was uh, the latter part of the book and I don't really want to go into that because we knew what took place because we lived it with you okay we didn't go and get um what do you call it arrested or anything of that matter but we saw all your footage that you had played or wanted to have it played on the show which they definitely did and of course Kenya was doing her conspiracy about you didn't have a storyline so you wanted to make the Black Lives Matter uh issue or concern or organization your storyline and we we thought you had changed we thought you were doing a pro-black thing and making people become aware that racism and discrimination is still here plaguing minority people uh people of color and we thought you were doing a darn thing and keeping your hands to yourself but we we see we see girl on portia family matters mm -mm. Nothing is farther than from the truth. You haven't changed. You still want to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Throw caution to the wind no matter who it hurts. You're just self-centered. And you always will be. <sighs> so, 
that's all I got y'all the book was horrible it gave us some chuckles here and there but it's talk it talks so much about dehumanizing herself and her character and anybody else that she wanted to bring down with her very little um uh, growth in the book if you want to call it that and uh, no accountability of her actions of whatever and whenever she went through the scenarios of when she went through them so if y'all like it love it gotta have more go and purchase her book but for me mm -mm, i wouldn't do it it's probably in a dollar tree a dollar general for this year's over with it's just hot and I started to get Will Smith book too, but his was thirty dollars. But I was like, I looked at it and I was like, ah, oh, the lies, the lies, the lies. No, I can't take another one. I can't take another one. So I just, you know, ended up with Portia. I won't be doing the rest of them because it, it's just too much. She talks more about Cordell, like she just wanna um have a storyline on him next or something, which I'm sure she don't wanna mess with that that dude. <laughs> She don't wanna she don't wanna mess with that dude because he'll probably be sending her cease and desist letters. Like, do not talk about me, do not do this, do not do that. But for a person that really hurt her as much as she said he hurt her and degraded her and dehumanized her, she sure talked about him from the first part of that book to the very end. I was like, Oh my goodness, girl. The drama, the horror. But anyway, that's all I had for the video, guys. Get down in those comments and you know, let me know what y'all thought about uh, Portia leaving Kenya's name totally out the book. But she's going to re reference her and, 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 and build a whole story around her for Chapter 7. But don't actually mention her by name. Now, how tactful is that? How tactless, ta yeah, tasteless and tactless is that? <laughs> the fool, the fuckery, the Oh, I gotta think with me some more words for Portia because she's just too much. She's fraudulently, she's fake, she's foolery, too much foolery and fuckery going on in her book, in her life, and it just needs to stop. It just needs to stop. Period. And point blank. Okay? But that's all I got, y'all. I will see y'all next video for more messy plane rides. Bye bye.